Good morning, guys. I want to get on here and give my actual review of Love and Marriage Huntsville Reunion Part 1. Basically, we are on center stage. Uh, the actual host, which is uh, Carlos King, to the point he greets the actual um, cast members. And they ask the question, who is going to be the host? And he uh, obliges and tells them that it's them, that it's him. Each one has their own little... Um, funny little looks on their faces but the most uh, hilarious response was that uh marceau said that he he didn't mind him being the host but the fact that the host knew everything but yeah you guys um everybody looks great um go eat your breakfast they're to the point where they're actually um hitting the stage um Letitia looks cute. Um, I'm not real partial to her hair or whatever, whatever. But I like the little reference that he made to Kimmy. He gave did her the Jessica Rabbit type um reference. But yeah, um, Marceau is to the point where he's uh doing what he does. But yeah, Carlos is asking the question that everybody wants to hear, and I'm here for it. And most importantly, um, everybody looks like they're not to the point where they're uptight. They're pretty much relaxed about it. So it looks like it's going pretty smooth and that's to the point where they're going to give good answers. He also asked um, Melody and Martel um, since they were the ones that pitched them the show, the question of if he if they had you know, regret doing the show, Martel says he does for the simple fact that he thinks that if he never would have did the show, he probably would have still been married. So he looks over to ask Melody does she feel the same? Melody said no. She said most important she would have already had divorced him due to his uh, infidelities. But yeah, um, everybody's saying that they're glad they did it because it's to the point of opening a lot of doors for them. Especially Melody, she's to the point where she has um, another single out. It's called Side Chick. If you're to the point where you're able to get on her page, she does have a YouTube. Get on there and see it. You won't regret it. I actually like the video. I personally think it was, it was an actual read to Arian, but I could be wrong. But um, yeah, she's pretty much getting out there in the music thing, and that's and I'm here for it. Uh, Martel's to the point he always shades her music career, so I think it's good that she's basically letting him see that, you know, not only she committed to it but she's actually successful in it but uh yeah you can see it all clear as day on his face that actually martel hates the fact that melanie is successful and most important that it's to the point where he really wants her back but he wants her back for all the wrong reasons i think he feels like he probably done messed up right now you can tell how he look at her he's saying to himself um i messed up but i'm not gonna admit it if that makes sense but yeah, uh, you can tell uh, Martel still wants to be team Melanie. He wants to be with her. But what gets me with him, he always try to rub her the wrong way and be trying to come at her sideways when really she be just trying to get get her answers out and be, be direct. He always be coming for her juggler. But uh, the question was also asked about Kyra, which is... Uh, Kimmy and her husband, um, I have to say, his first wife. And then the running joke was that Kimmy was actually a side chick. Kimmy actually said no, she was not a side chick. And her actual husband, to the point he co-signs it, says that the reason why that he, people can, should not be saying it is because when they met, he was uh, officially divorced. I'm not divorced, sorry, the paperwork is already signed. So it was no reason for people calling him, but, but Carlos asked him the question of why he won't defend her when people say that she's a side chick. He said, well, it's not to the point he feels like he has to defend her because he knows that she's not the side chick. Kimmy also reiterates and brings back the fact that uh, Martel and, Me and Melody laughed about the fact that they, they thought that she was an actual side chick. They were actually, I think, at a hospital visit or something, doctor visit or whatever, and they played a clip of it. And also, it was shocking that Marceau laughed about it as well, but he said the reason why he actually said what he said, he was basically laughing because there's no way possible that she could be a side chick. But uh, it's good to know that um, Kimmy, her husband, and the ex-wife are in a good place now. Uh, for a minute, Monster was out there with them, so I'm thinking now he's going back home with his mom. So it looks like they're co-parenting, and it looks like most supportive Kimmy's getting along with the uh, ex-wife. But uh, Kimmy wants everybody to know she's not the, not a side chick, and most important, she did not break up a happy home. Now she says the real reason why her and Kimmy did not get along in the beginning because probably within that little stage in between the the real the final divorce, she felt like it maybe was room for them to get back together. But he said no, he had physically moved on. He said they hadn't been together in the same marital home for a year when he actually met Kimmy. Well, there's your proof. But yeah, um, you can tell that actually everybody's to the point they're excited to be back. But you can see the you can cut the tension with a knife between Martel and Melody. But um, I um, uh, he also asked 
Tisha, does she think that Kim was a side chick? Tisha's answer is that she didn't even know that she was a side chick. In her mind, she thought that, yeah, it, it was a fresh relationship and no. But according to the husband, he said, now, they really, really knew his secrets. They would know that, no, no, no. He had a lot of women before he got with Kimmy, so no, she was not a side chick. So she's trying to figure out why everybody's implying that, but I think it's pretty much a running joke. That everybody basically wants to... um think that she's a sad chick if that makes sense but me personally um it's not about whether you think she's a sad chick the point is whether or not they're happily married i also got to see uh, um as i call it from the file one of the episodes where they showed the actual wedding so they were genuinely happy and most importantly it was really, really nice but uh i think it's a thing where they want to love to hate kimmy if that makes sense but uh kimmy to the point where she's proving um that she is his woman for him and most importantly she can stay her own but um she's to the point she's letting people know not to keep saying it most importantly she is not feeling it but uh it is what it is and i have to um kind of commend kimmy for that because she was being a grown woman about it and the fact that she actually defended her own self but uh, as far as her husband defending her, I still think that he should have defended her. But I guess he feel in his mind was no no need to defend. You know what I'm saying? Because people going to feel how they want to feel. Maybe that's why. So let's talk about this timeline. So you filed for divorce twice. Yeah, he said he filed twice. He said the first time that he filed, his wife avoided it. So that's pretty much what slowed the process up a little more. He said after the first filing, it was not intimate. He said he moved out and he's basically doing living a bachelor life. And he said, here comes Kimmy. And Kimmy was the one. And that's what he stopped doing, what he was doing. And actually, here we are, fast forward, they are married. So basically, I think that thing was over before Kimmy even got there. And most importantly, he didn't know nothing about the wife probably until they started dating, if that makes sense. So I guess the the wife probably uh, held a grudge with Kimmy because she felt like maybe she could have got back with him, but he already says that he demonstrates that he said no. So one of the analogies you made with Patricia, Kimmy, was that Maurice could not take another person using the toothbrush. No, that was Patricia had that conversation with him. What did she mean by that? If someone else uses your toothbrush, what are you using? Well, I don't do riddles, but... <laughs> so I'm going to ask you Yeah, you guys, I'm to the point I'm enjoying part one. I didn't think it was boring at all, but I personally like part three, the, the best. Part two is neck and neck because he, uh, I get to that, but, but I'm going to go ahead and say the reason why I like part two is because they bring the actual moms in there. They bring the Tisha's mom in there, and they bring Melanie's mom in there, and they basically have their little face off. Basically, she says the relationship is, that her and Kyra have now is basically to the point where they're in a um, space where they actually speak, which is good. She says she even went too far as to tell her that she actually was going to be on there and let her know that ahead of time with the kind of questions that she was going to have to answer. But yeah, may I iterate that Mel did look gorgeous. And Martel, you could tell he kept sneaking a peek at her, but he said the reason why he would, if he did get back with her, be because of the kids. I was like, no. You back with her? You want to get back with her? Cause you realize that Arian ain't what you thought she was. It's very ironic that him and Arian have all the time in the world to be together, and yet they have not gotten married. They have a baby together, but that's neither here nor there. And then the real reason why she was telling us uh, blow by blow what happened when they actually had um, the, the, the the actual pandemic and it was on lockdown, he was gone more than he was home. She said in her mind she knew that something went right. Now Carlos asked him what was he doing. He responded that he was actually at the gym. My thing is no, and like Carlos said too, is no gym open. So he to the point Carlos gets straight no chase. So he basically asked. He said, "Well, what were you doing?" He was like, "Well, um, I wasn't doing nothing." He said, "Well, were you cheating on your wife?" He said, "No." He said, "Well, if you want to cheat on your wife, how did she get pregnant?" He got real real quiet, and they say no. They moved on to the next uh scene. But Belda asserts us and lets us know the reason why she really filed for divorce because she had had enough. And the fact that she was trying to work on her marriage and he was gone. And most important, in her back of her mind, she was knowing that he was with that particular girl. Because I already knew in the beginning that she been knew about the girl. But it's, it full, became full circle considering that they were trying to work on their marriage. At that time, she had already had the last baby. So the nail in the coffin was that the new wife, I'm sorry, new woman is not only um, a part of their life again, but he's actually gotten her pregnant. And the most part about it, he basically told her that 
he needed to find new ways to cheat. And she said, yes, she did file for divorce, and she did not regret it. Also, the scene that really got me was the fact that she said she was guess she was driving up there to see him. And I guess the kids seen him and spotted him first and said the little girl was screaming in the back, get away from my dad. My thing is when kids say stuff like that, let you know that they're only used to you and, and your um, significant other being together. And I thought that was a touching moment. But uh, Martel don't see what it's doing to the kids because at the end of the day, he not only has another, add another sibling in the mix, but they're confusing the kids. Now, he might feel like him coming being co-parenting is good, which it is, but he's not being transparent with the kids. Now, the oldest boy, he knows a whole, whole lot. He's quite figured it out. So, it's going to be kind of hard for Martel to um, come back if he don't go ahead and dip it in the bud with the oldest child. He's very, very smart. And the middle daughter is too, but the, the other one, he really, really sharp. But um, I just have to wrap this up and let you guys know that, yeah. Uh, season one is um I'm sorry not season one Love and Marriage Huntsville reunion is given and you won't be disappointed check it out I hope you guys are liking my review so far I will be giving you part two give me a little minute to um uh, reiterate it I'm gonna um actually redo it and upload it again I did not like the quality of the second one that's why I was taking so long but I tell you one thing that suit that Martel had on is bothering me and my homegirls. It is too tight and most importantly, it's very distracting. Now the other women, other men look look genuinely nice, but it seems like everything that Martel puts on be tight. Suit, shirt, it don't matter. But I, I have to iterate that Melody did look gorgeous, but you could tell that actually Martel was kicking himself like he's saying, I let that go. But you know, you live and you learn. Most importantly, Martel ain't ready to do that. And he ain't ready to grow up. Martel is woe is me type person. And he's not, a, he don't want to be accountable for his actions. But it, it was so funny when Carlos um, basically asked him, how did the girlfriend get pregnant? <laughs> he couldn't say that. But I said to myself, yeah, you was at the gym, but you wasn't at the gym where you actually work out. You was at Arian's house, and that's how, thus is how they get the baby. But yeah, just like I told you guys, the room is giving. The fashions are good as well, but I was I was shocked to know that it wasn't it wasn't held in Huntsville, it was held in, held in LA on the stage. <coughs> I did not know that. I didn't catch that the first time. But Carlos is giving with his little suit anyway, and he's getting he's really not getting the girls together like he normally do. He's actually playing a little shy, but he got I guess he got tired of uh, Martel deflecting, so he went on told him to come on home with it. And I thought that was so funny. It's sad that Martel don't really want to come and be transparent. Even with that issue. So he tells that he's probably, in my mind, ashamed of it. But yeah, you guys, it's like I said, I'm going to wrap it up. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. And you guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.